All right, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part two of Wilderness versus Sinful Cities. Um, listen, people, you know, there's going to come a time when we're not going to be able to live in the cities. Some of us will probably have to die for our faith. Others will be out in the wilderness and some of us are going to have to uh, teach those I have a feeling that the Lord's going to gather his people in the wilderness uh, probably not all this together but uh, you know there'll be small groups and uh, those of you that don't know what's going on are going to have to teach those that don't know those that the church is brainwashed those that the church has taught the pre-trib rapture, uh, even if they don't go out in the wilderness to escape the mark of the beast or whatever, they might have to flee the cities just to stay alive. Uh, people have no idea what's going on in South Africa. And the uh, beasts of the field, uh, a lot of them with two legs, um, Paul said he fought with wild beasts at Ephesus. Well, he's not talking about four-legged beasts. He's talking about two-legged beasts. Beasts that don't uh, love the Lord Jesus Christ. So there's going to have to be a time when uh, God's people are going to have to flee the cities. It's going to happen, people. And for those of you that don't believe, uh, that didn't listen to part one, because this is part two, uh, that don't believe that Babylon is going to be end time Jerusalem. Let me tell you something. Satan is uh, Satan already rules from Vatican City. He already rules from there. He wants to rule from Jerusalem. He wants to take the the throne of King David and of Christ. He tried it in the past. When there was war in heaven, and he wants to do it again. Jerusalem is God's city. And guess what? It happened in the past. The Canaanites were in Jerusalem. And Israel went in and uh, partly kicked them out, but not totally. Well, now the Canaanites are back in the, they're back in the land. Satan wants to rule from Jerusalem. Where does Christ return to when he returns in glory? The Mount of Olives. He left and he'll return in the sky, in the clouds, in glory. He's not going to be returning to Rome. Christ is going to be returning to end time Jerusalem and he's going to fight the armies of the earth that are going to come and oppose him. You know, these idiots that teach Rome, 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 Rome. They're deceivers or they're deceived. End time Jerusalem. Keep your eyes on Jerusalem. The Antichrist already run Jerusalem, but there will be the man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast, the dragon, the false prophet, the Antichrist. Even now are there many Antichrists, but there's going to be the man of sin, the son of perdition. So, if the cities are no longer safe to live in, what should Christians do to prepare themselves well, that's a good question. You know, in uh, the book of Exodus, God took Israel out of Egypt, where? Into the wilderness. Because he wanted them to rely upon him. They were out in the desert. Uh, you don't grow crops in a desert. Not without water, you sure don't. So what did God do? He fed them with manna, bread from heaven. And what is Christ? He's the bread from heaven. Didn't he say he was the bread from heaven? 
the living bread and the water. God gave them water out of a rock. Well, the rock is Christ. I've done numerous videos on that kind of stuff. I'm just giving you an overview. So God gave them bread and water in the desert. He wanted them out of Egypt. And now he was trying to get Egypt out of them. He wanted them to follow him. During the day, there was a pillar of a cloud. And at night, there was a pillar of fire that gave them light. Jesus is the light, the light of the world. And he was a cloud by day. You know, there's so much symbolism in the Old Testament that points to the New Testament. I, uh, you know, there was a time when I got out of Bible school, college, I wanted so badly to be a, 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 a Bible teacher in a so-called Christian school. Matter of fact, uh, you know, that was why I went and got the master's degree. Because generally with a bachelor's degree, you can't do much. Uh, but, you know, it didn't take me long to realize that you got to sell your soul to Babylon to do that stuff. And you they don't want you teaching the truth. And I mentioned it before and I'll mention it again. When they ask you for your testimony, uh, they're, they want to see if you're a real deal or if you're one of them. You know, and, and you'll use all their little catchphrases. You know, they got little catchphrases, just like the Masonic Lodge. They got certain catchphrases and they got symbols. Well, so do the goats. The goats uh, that, you know, that the, the, the wolves in the, uh, the wolves want to entertain the goats. And that's what they're doing in the, these churches. But it didn't take me long to f realize that you're not going to reform Babylon. It's not going to happen. But there's going to come a time when Christians are going to either flee the city because they're just so evil that uh, if they don't flee, they'll be killed or they'll be hunted down for being believers. Uh, what will happen first? I don't know. I don't know. All I know is when there's not 10 righteous people in New York City, God will probably destroy it. So... With that in mind, let's take a look at a few things. All right, so God led Israel out of Egypt because he wanted them to rely on him for their food, for their water, for their spiritual instruction at the hand of Moses. God gave Moses the spiritual instructions. They wanted them. Uh, Moses was to be the intermediary, the guy in the middle. Well, guess what? When Christ came to earth, God came in the flesh. 1 Timothy 3.16, God was manifest in the flesh. People, Christ was our mediator. Moses was that Old Testament, Old Covenant. Christ is that New Covenant. We've actually got God the Son for our mediator now. We don't need Moses. I mean, Moses was probably a nice guy. He was really meek. Um, you know, I'm not putting anything down about Moses, but we got God in the flesh. So God wanted Israel out of Egypt, and he wanted to get Egypt, their spiritual Egypt, out of Israel. He wanted Israel to follow the Lord. He fed them. Their clothes never wore out. He gave them water. Just like he's going to do in, in the book of Revelation. Rivers of living water. The bread of life. Uh, clothes that will never wear out. Uh, clothes of righteousness washed in the blood of the Lamb. White robes. I mean, come on, people. You know, this is what 
the church has to look forward to. And you could either be part of the uh, the uh, the whore of Babylon, or you could be part of the virgin church of Christ, the bride of Christ. And he wants a virgin. He doesn't want a whore. Nobody wants a whore. Well, uh, maybe I should take that back. An unsaved man wants a whore, but you know, uh, and I'm not trying to be crude here, but uh, I once heard a saying, somebody said, uh, a single guy wants a whore uh, before marriage, but once he gets married, he wants a virgin. He wants a bride. And sadly, there was a time I used to think like that. But uh, yeah, people, the bride of Christ. Christ is looking for a virgin bride without spot, without blemish. He wants, he wants her to leave Babylon behind. Don't be like Lot's wife that looks back to Sodom and 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 says, "Oh, I'm going to miss my microwave oven. I'm going to miss my, uh, you know, my hot water heater." And my uh, coffee maker and, you know, my cappuccino maker and, you know, my foot massager and, you know, all that other stuff. You know, Christ likened his church as an army. Paul even said, endure hardness as a good soldier. Uh how many of you people have been in the military? Let me tell you something about the military. I was in the military. A life of a soldier is no bed of roses. The only thing that about the bed of roses is all the thorns. Uh, that's about the only closest thing that a life of a soldier comes to. I mean, a life of a soldier can be tough. And that's what Christ likens his church like. The wilderness people, that's the future of the church, not the cities. They're going to make it so that you cannot earn a living, whether it's the vaccination or a microchip or whatever it is. They're going to push you out. And we should flee willingly and not look back like Locke's wife. So what am I talking about? Well, let's take a look. Now, you can read Matthew 24, Luke 21, or Mark 13. The Bible says, now well, let's see, which one should I read? I guess we'll read uh, Mark 13, 14. But when ye shall see the abomination of desolation. What's the abomination of desolation? Well, in uh, after Christ died, uh, animal sacrifice was an abomination. Did you know that? After Christ died on the cross, he said it was finished. Do you know that in 70 AD, God sent the Jews a message about their little abomination and their little temple worship and animal sacrifice? Boom was burned by the Romans. Do you know that in 363 AD, uh, Rome tried to help the uh, Jews rebuild their little temple? Guess what? There were earthquakes. There was even fire that came out of the ground and killed workers and destroyed their work. And everybody said, uh, oh, okay, you want to hire me to help build this temple? Uh, no thanks. The guy that worked on it last time, he got burned up. He got killed. I, I think I'm going to pass. So they gave up. Not many people know about 363 AD. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A temp uh, the temple, all the construction on the temple was destroyed in an earthquake. Yeah. They don't, you know, you didn't hear about that in history, did you? No, 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 no. But I personally, I honestly believe that there's going to be another temple because that will be the ultimate blasphemy against God the uh, Son. 
and the sacrifice that he did. And if they do build a temple, what would the man of sin do? He wants to sit in the temple of God proclaiming himself that he is God. Isn't that the... Isn't that what... Isn't that what Satan wants to do? He wants worship. Luke 21, verse 17. Jesus speaking, And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. And what name is that? Jesus. They don't hate the name of Yeshua. They hate the name of Jesus. But there shall not an hair of your head perish. In your patience possess ye your souls. And when, you shall, and when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Now this happened in 70 AD. Jerusalem was compassed about, surrounded by uh, at least two Roman legions. And um, two or three legions, maybe more, I don't know. But the deal is, I honestly think that this is going to happen again. I honestly, I wonder, when the Antichrist sits or is in Jerusalem, I wonder if there'll be an armies that surround Jerusalem wanting to attack the man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast, the Antichrist, whatever name you want to call him, that they want to attack him. Now, I'm not saying this is going to happen, but I, this is kind of a theory of mine. I could be wrong. But the false prophet is going to be able to bring down fire from the sky, just like Elijah did. Matter of fact, the false prophet for the Antichrist will probably claim to be Elijah. But the, when the two witnesses appear, one of them is going to be Elijah. So there might actually be two Elijahs. I'm not 100% sure about this. There's some guessing, you know, but what can I tell you? I It's just as good a guess. Yours, your guess is as good as guess as mine or anybody else's. But if Jerusalem's surrounded by armies and the false prophet brings down fire from the sky and wipes this army off the face of the earth, guess what? Everybody's going to believe the Messiah has come, except for the Christians. Who are going to be very small remnant because your Benny Hens, your John Hagees, your Kenneth Copelands, and T.D. Jakes, and all those people on TBN, and your Sid Roths, and all that crowd, they're all going to say, oh, even Christ has come. Oh, blessed Yeshua and the Shekinah. You watch. You watch and see. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. That means near. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countries enter thereinto. In other words, if you, if we, just like in 70 AD, the people that believed Jesus and remembered his words, they left. When they saw Jer Jerusalem compassed about with armies, uh, actually, General Titus pulled his armies back for a period of time because he was awaiting reinforcements. There was another legion coming, and he wanted to attack with his full force, not uh, you know two waves. He wanted to come in with everything he had. So he pulled back so as not to let the people engage him. And then uh, everybody saw... Uh, it was open, so they left. They said, uh-oh, we better get out of here. Uh, Jesus said, flee to the mountains, and that's what they did. The Christians that believed Jesus fled to the mountains, and they were spared. And all the Antichrists in Jerusalem that didn't believe Jesus, well, when the uh, next legion arrived under General Titus's command, they again surrounded Jerusalem, and they exterminated everybody that they could get a hold of, or brought them into slavery. You did not want to be uh, 
make Rome angry. God showed them what he thought of their little temple worship. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains and let them which are in the midst of it depart out and let not them that are in the countries enter therein. For these be the days of vengeance. Whose vengeance? God's vengeance. That all things which are written may be fulfilled. Oh, and another point, people. You know, the day, the exact day that uh, Jerusalem was destroyed by Rome is the exact same anniversary day that Babylon destroyed Jerusalem also. What are the chances that Jerusalem would be destroyed by both Rome and Babylon on the same exact day? Huh? Oh, that's just a coincidence, Chaplain Bob. Sure. Sure. And we all descended from monkeys, right? <laughs> well, never mind. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things that are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon those people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Oh, yeah. All right, let's go to Mark 13, which is a parallel verse with Matthew 24. Uh, Mark 13, let's start in... Oh, we need to read this whole thing, don't we? Mark 13, oh yeah. All right, let's take a look at Mark uh, chapter 13. Ma Matthew 24 is a companion verse. So this is Mark's version, and then you got Matthew's version. But uh, we're going to read Mark's version. And I know I've covered this a number of times, but it's part of this uh, wilderness series. So let's take a look. And as he, Jesus, went out of the temple, one of his disciples saith unto him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. You know, so they're like, yo, Jesus, look at this magnificent building. Isn't this amazing? And Jesus answering said unto them, Seest thou these great buildings? There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Well, this was fulfilled in 70 AD when the Romans came and utterly destroyed the temple at Jerusalem. So when the Jews tell you that the Wailing Wall is part of the temple, uh, either Jesus is a liar in Matthew 13, 2, or... The Jews are full of you-know-what. And I say the Jews are full of you-know-what. Of course, I say that anyways, but yeah. Verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed, lest any man deceive you. So, in other words, listen and pay attention. Don't let anybody trick you or deceive you. Verse 6. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall, and shall deceive many. And when you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be, but the end shall not be yet. Now remember, we had the Civil War, we had World War, World War One, World War Two, Korea, Vietnam. Uh, you know, there's been 
Somebody once told me that um, since the United Nations has been created, that there's never been a day in this earth that there's not been some kind of a war going on. I don't know if that's true, but wouldn't surprise me. So, wars, rumors of wars, be not troubled, for such things must needs be, but the end shall not be yet. For nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes in divers places. Well, I've heard according to the U.S. Geological Survey, the USGS, that there has been uh, an increase in earthquakes. And there shall be famines. Ah, and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows. So, but take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils and in the synagogues. Whoa! They're going to deliver us up to the synagogues, but everybody says it's Rome. It's Rome. It's Rome. It's the Vatican. It's the Pope. Well, I have never seen the Pope in, in a synagogue. For they shall deliver you up to councils, and in the synagogues ye shall be beaten, and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. Who's them? Take a guess. They hang out in the synagogues. Yeah. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak, neither do ye premeditate, but whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye, for it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. So when they're taking you up to be tried for being a Christian, don't think about what you're going to say, because the Holy Spirit is going to speak through you and that's your proof that you are saved and going to the kingdom. Because the Holy Ghost is going to speak through you, condemning them for what the evil that they're doing. Verse 12. Now the brother shall betray the brother to death and the father of the son. And children shall rise up against their parents and shall cause them to be put to death. Why are children going to rise up against their parents? Because they were brainwashed from kindergarten all the way through college. I hear Christian parents saying, I don't know what happened to my child. I brought him up good and taught him about Jesus. Did you really bring him up good and teach him about Jesus? What was the first lie you taught him? Oh, you lost your baby tooth. And the tooth fairy came and left you a dollar or five dollars or whatever. And then you taught him about Christmas and Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny. And then when they got older, when you taught them about Jesus, well, guess what? That's just another tooth fairy, Santa Claus and Easter Bunny. And then you sent them off to college and high school where they were taught evolution and you can't figure out why they don't believe in Jesus. It's just another fairy tale lie that you taught them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my college professors taught me that we all descended from apes or ascended from apes or whatever. And you wonder why the children are going to turn against you. You know, they don't teach in school about all the millions and millions and millions of people that perished under communism. Now they teach, oh, communism's wonderful. The government's going to take care of us. Yeah. Between Mao and Stalin, probably 100 million people died in the last 100 years. And this is December 19th, 2020. Well... In uh, 1917, I think it was, was the November Revolution of Communism. They just lined Christians up and killed them. 
Uh, sometimes they didn't want to waste a bullet. So if they had an old wooden building where they were meeting in a church and they didn't deem the building worth saving, they just, you know, poured kerosene around the building, the wooden building, lit it on fire with everybody inside. And if you went outside, well, they just shot you. You know? That's what they don't tell you about communism. They don't teach that in school. No, but I read about it when the newspapers in the United States uh, used to actually print somewhat of the truth. They don't print any of the truth anymore. So, Verse 13. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. And what name is that? The name that Gabriel told Joseph and Mary to give to Christ's child. And that name was Jesus. Not Yeshua. Sorry, Yeshua is going to probably end up being the name of the Antichrist that the Jews worship. And their false prophet probably named Elijah. Don't be surprised if one of the two witnesses is Elijah preaching against the other Elijah, two of them in the end times. Don't be surprised if that happens. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. The Jews don't hate Yeshua's name, but they sure hate that name Jesus. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Why would Jesus say that, that you had to endure unto the end? My pastor told me once saved, always saved. Eternal security. I said a little 30-second sinner's prayer at a Billy Graham thingy. I can go live any way I want and keep my job as a hitman for the mafia. Boy, it pays good. I got $10,000 for bumping off somebody. Praise a Jesus. I don't think so. Jesus said you had to endure unto the end. Verse 14, but when ye shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, let him that readeth understand, then let him that be in Judea flee to the mountains. Well, when you see the man of sin sitting, standing in the holy place, proclaiming himself that he is God, do what the believers did in 70 AD. They ran to the mountains. Well, they didn't see the man of sin, but they saw uh, they saw Jerusalem that was compassed about with armies. Well, the uh, Matthew twenty four fifteen says, "When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand." Okay, then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. So, the abomination of desolation, in my opinion, is the uh, anybody performing animal sacrifices in a temple after what Jesus did. But the man of sin, there's going to come a time when the man of sin, the Antichrist, the beast, the false prophet, uh, is going to proclaim, stand in the temple proclaiming that he is God. That is, when you see that, well, let's read. Verse 15, And let him that is on the housetop not go down into the house, neither enter therein, to take anything out of his house. And let him that is in the field not turn back again for to take up his garment. In other words, when you see this, run. God's telling you, run. Don't go back home and say, well, you know, it's going to be chilly tonight. I better go get my coat. I better go home. And No, you better not. Don't go home. So guess what? That's why I've been telling everybody, have a survival pack. Have the things you need. Uh, I know people that always keep a survival pack in the back of their car. Don't go home without it, right? 
Don't leave home without it, I should say. I'm sorry, I was wrong. Don't leave home without it. You should always have your survival pack. Now, I've been covering that stuff. A knife, a way to make a fire. Matter of fact, you should have paper maps in case the GPS doesn't ever work. And GPS is wrong sometimes. Paper maps and a compass, a map of your state where the wilderness areas are, and a map of the city you live in, a street map, and a compass. Do you know how to get out of the city? If, if you had to, if things got really bad and they were hunting down Christians, would you know how to leave? You know what they did in Pompeii? Pompeii, they took, from what I've read in history, they took a pig and crucified it and said, this is Jesus, and they marched it on a, you know, little parade type thing. And then they proceeded to catch and kill the Christians, and they stole their houses and their businesses. And all the Christians had to flee for their lives. And about two weeks later, Mount Vesuvius blew up, and volcanic lava and ash. Now, I'm not talking about like ashes on a cold fire. I'm talking about hot volcanic ash like brimstone and fire like Sodom and Gomorrah rained down upon Mount Vesuvius. Killed them in their, when they were in their beds. They didn't even have a chance to get out of bed. They were burned alive in their beds. Some of them. God rained fire and brimstone upon those devils. Oh, you want to kill my children? You want to steal their homes and their property and their businesses? I got a solution for you. Yeah. Mount Vesuvius. But the Christians had left two weeks earlier. They were far away. They weren't, they weren't affected by it. There's going to come a time the evil will drive the righteous out of the cities. It's coming, people. It's coming. Mark 13, 14, or 15. And let him that is on the housetop not go down into the house, neither enter therein to take anything out of his house. And let him that is in the field not turn back again for to take up his garment. But woe to them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. And pray ye that your flight be not in the winter. For in those days shall be affliction. But my pastor told me the pre-trib rapture. Well, your pastor lied to you. He's a false prophet. And you know what happens to false prophets? Well, you're going to find out. But my pastor on TVN said, well, I don't care what your pastor on CBN says. I care about what Christ says right here. Of course, they'll tell you, oh, this is for those unbelieving Jews that, uh, you know, after the rapture of the church. No, this is for those that believe in Christ. For in those days shall be affliction such as, such as was not from the beginning of the creation which God created Unto this time neither shall be, and except that the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved, but for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen. Wow, did you know that God chose? Yeah. But for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days. And if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or lo, he is there, believe him not. For false Christ and false prophets shall rise and preach on TBN. I mean, I'm sorry. For false Christ and false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if, if it were possible, even the elect. But take ye heed and behold, I have foretold you all things. But in those days shall, uh, but in those days after that, tribulation shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. Read the book of Joel. 
Same things. Read the book of Revelation. Same things. And the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then shall he send his angels. Yeah, God's holy angels. And then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. Now the fig tree was the, the symbol of Judah. When her branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is not near. So ye in like manner, when ye shall see these things come to pass, know that it is nigh, even at the doors. For I say unto you that this generation shall not pass till all these things be done. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and of and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Do you know Christ doesn't even know the day? Only Father knows. Take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work, and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even, or at midnight, or at cock, the cock crowing, or in the morning, lest, sudden, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping, spiritually sleeping people. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. And the point is, people, there will, uh, now this, when you, when, uh, I don't know how many of us are going to actually live to see the man of sin appear on history. I don't know. Some of us are going to be martyred for the faith. Some of us are going to have to go into the wilderness to escape the cities where the devil's children, the devil's followers, and the beasts of the field. Now, I remember Paul said that he fought with wild beasts at Ephesus. Some of those beasts have two legs. Yeah. But some of us are going to have to flee the cities because they're not going to be safe. They're going to drive the believers out. You're going to have to one day flee for your lives. Be prepared. Do you have a place to go? Do you have some provisions put away? You know? Do you have... If, if you did find a place, do you have seeds to plant for food? Uh, do you have food for a couple months? Uh, let me ask you a question. What would you do? There was a family in communist Russia. Uh, things got bad. They, they stole everybody's food. In Ukraine, and the guy watched his father, uh, his brother, be shot right in front of him and his family. So he packed up his family and uh, fled to the wilderness. They found him after uh, World War II. The guy didn't even know that, and his family. I think he had, I think he had one or two daughters and a son, and him and his wife. Uh, they escaped into the wilderness. They were 200 miles into the uh, Siberia, away from the nearest town or city. 200 miles. The Russians only discovered them because they were flying in a helicopter, I think. And uh, they saw what looked like a house with uh, smoke coming from it, from a you know, a fire, a cooking fire. And uh, they'd been out in the wilderness for years. They, you know, they left, I think, in the 20s. They didn't even know World War II had ended. Let me see if I could find their uh, names so you could read about them. 
Yeah, they were called the Lykov family. L-Y-K-O-V. Um, family of six spent 42 years in isolation. Uh, they were in southern Siberia. They were 200 miles from the nearest town. Wow. All right, according to this, in 1936, the uh, family fled into the wilderness. you got to realize, this was during the uh, uh, purge of Stalin. They didn't even know World War II had happened. They were, you know, like I say, 200 miles away from uh, civilization. Let's see, that would be... Um, that would be about 300 kilometers for those of you in Europe. Yeah, they were a long ways away from civilization. I guess they kept moving deeper and deeper into this, you know, wilderness. But that's going to, you know. But the point is, you got to be prepared. This is coming. I have never seen things this moral, spiritual rot of America. And Europe is no better. I was in Europe in the mid-70s. And, uh, you know, they had a red light district in Germany. I used to walk a lot of places in Germany. I didn't, I didn't drive a car the whole time I was in Germany. Um, it was just too expensive and, you know, I was a private. You couldn't really afford a car. Uh, but uh, I was walking, and they did. They had a red light district. And the girls would be sitting like in a storefront glass window with almost nothing on. And, uh, you know, yeah, come on in, soldier. I'll uh, relieve you, help relieve you of uh, your money and a couple other things, I guess. So, uh, uh I never, never partook, but uh, yeah, could have if I wanted to. Denmark was the uh, porn capital of Europe, like uh, Hollywood is the porn capital of the United States. I saw some very disgusting, uh, even as an unsaved uh, unbeliever back then, I saw some disgusting stuff that was laying around uh like at the barracks, what the GIs would bring. Uh, really nasty stuff. Women with snakes. I mean, you know, they mock us. And that was in the 70s, people. It's, it's, it's got to be 10 times worse now. 10 times worse. At least. People, they're going to force you out of the cities. It's going to happen. And do you have food? And I don't mean just food for, you know, I'm talking about spiritual food. Do you have a Bible? You should have a Bible in your pack. Yes. You know, one day, God's going to gather his, his people in the wilderness. Read Revelation chapter 12. The woman's going to flee into the wilderness. It's going to happen. And that woman is the church, the bride of Christ. People, you're, you're going to have people that aren't going to know what's going on that have been lied to by the B system, by the TBN crowd, and the 700 Prophets of Baal Club, and the demon nominational 501c3 preachers. And they're going to wonder... What in the world happened? They're going to one day either have to deny Christ, which they're probably, most of them probably will, because when they find out that they have to die for their faith, they're going to say, oh, well, Jesus was a false prophet. He told us the pre-trib rapture. No, Jesus didn't tell you that lie. Your preacher did. Jesus warned you of tribulation and trouble. Your pastors, the wolves in sheep's clothing told you that garbage. 
and they'll believe the Jews. Ah, oh, well, we told you Christians that Jesus was a false messiah. We told you this for almost 2,000 years. Now, our Messiah tells us to kill you Christians or deny Jesus and live or die. We're going to cut your head off. What are you going to do? You're going to die for Christ? You know, if you're not living for Christ now, you're not going to die for him later. And I admit, I'm a hypocrite sometimes. I admit it. May the Lord give me strength if that's what he wants me to do. But people, some of us are going to have to die for our faith. Some of us are going to have to go into the wilderness where we're going to meet others, probably. And you're going to have to teach them. What are you going to do when they say, why is all this happening to us? Why? Why would a loving God do this to us? Did you not read? Well, my pastor said, you know. What did your pastor say? Your pastor lied. Did you ever read the Bible? Well, no, I didn't read it. I was too busy. Too busy doing what? Watching movies? Television? What? What were you doing? You know, those that are have to flee the cities for their lives, if they meet you in the wilderness, can you show them why all these things are coming to pass upon the people? Could you show them? You know, you should take a Bible and all the end time stuff, mark it in your Bible, maybe on the, page, you know, the blank pages, and show them all, why all these things were going to happen. I think it's Joel chapter 3, Matthew 24, Mark 13, Revelation 12, Thessalonians. Uh, I don't remember. I think it's Second Thessalonians. Mark the spots. Write them down in your Bible so that when somebody comes, if they meet you, and you can say, oh, this was foretold. Why didn't you believe? Why weren't you ready? And you can show them. It'll be, you know, I never wanted to be a teacher. Never, 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 never. But one day I felt convicted. Why do you keep studying and studying and studying and you don't share what you know? You think I wanted to go on YouTube and, and, and radio? I've been on at least two different radio stations. I used to write articles for newspaper, Christian newspaper. You think, uh, I didn't want to do all this stuff. I used to get death threats on you from YouTube. One, uh, one person actually told me they, my address and says, I'm coming to kill you. So, uh, you know, I really wasn't scared. I said, come on down. What was that? Uh, the Price is Right, Bob Barker. Boy, if you remember that, you're old. Uh, yeah. Come on down. You know? People, oh, let me tell you something. Things are getting real. Things are getting real. Christians are getting to be the most hated. They don't even, you know, I, I never thought I would see an attack on the name of Jesus. But there it is. Oh, Yeshua HaMashiach. Boy, I tell you what, when we start getting our uh, uh, knowledge from Antichrist Jews, God help us. And everybody, oh, well, they're, you know there's Messianic Jews, Bob. Well, if they're Jews that come to Christ, they're not Jews, they're Christians. And besides, not one of them can show you their lineage from the temple all the way back to Judah. They can't do it because the records don't exist. Every single one of you listening to me has just as much chance of being of Abraham's seed than anybody running around claiming to be a Jew. As far as you know, they're a child of Cain or Canaan. 
You know, they don't even, you know, they can't prove nothing. Just because somebody says, oh, I'm a Jew, big deal. Jesus told some of them that they were the children of the devil in John 8, 44. And he wasn't calling them names when he said, I tell you the truth. He wasn't sitting there calling them names. He was telling them the truth. You know, people, it's time to get serious. Put together a pack. And if you need, I've got, you know what? I keep hearing people that used to leave comments on my channel. They're all getting deleted. My channel is going to be gone one day. I got a playlist on uh, wilderness survival. I got a playlist on items you should have for that survival pack. I'm telling you, people, it's coming to pass. Do you have maps? Do you have a compass? Do you have a books on what plants are edible? We might have to leave the cities before the Antichrist ever even appears. It's getting to be that point. And besides, if you don't take the mark or the vaccine or whatever, you might not be able to buy or sell. Can't have a job. If you can't buy anything, you can't collect your Social Security or your unemployment or your whatever, your universal basic income that the communists want to give you without the mark or whatever thing, what are you going to do? Well, Chaplain Bob, I got to I got to take the mark of the beast to feed my family. God wouldn't God, God would want me to take the mark to feed my family. I've actually had people tell me that. Bible says you take the mark, you're thrown into the lake of fire. Period. It shows a total lack of faith that God will feed his sheep. Think about it. You're only promised two things in this life. Two things. Paul writes in 1 Timothy 6, 8, And having food and raiment, raiment's clothing, and having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. Oh, yeah. You know, in Matthew 6, 26, Jesus said, Behold the fowls of the air. For they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? That's right. You know, so, but the thing is, if, you know, consider the ant. The ant gathers food and stores it for the winter. And Jesus warns you to... Prepare. You know, I don't know. I don't know what to tell everybody, you know. But uh, there's going to come a time. But you know what? If you see something bad happen, you might not be able to go home. And Matthew 24 and Mark 13 tells you, don't go back to the house if the abomination of desolation happens. So there will come a time. There will come a time when people will have to leave the wicked cities. They'll be driven out. And it might happen before there's even the man of sin shows up on the scene. So put it together, people. Put it together. And uh, there's all kinds of good videos on on my playlist. Check it out. And those of you that want all my information, uh, all my Bible studies, well, follow the link. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be on YouTube. So be ready, people. Be ready. Seems like every day somebody else writes me and say, oh, they deleted my channel. Oh, they deleted me. I just I, I, this last week, I've talked to probably four or five people that they've deleted their channels or whatever off YouTube. 
Get ready, people. The purge is coming. So, all right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.